Now that we have our page structured, it's time to start building our app. Bubble provides us with pre-built elements that we use to create designs, but we can also save them to use later. One of these elements is our header, and it comes with every Bubble app. We just drag it into our page, and now we have site navigation. If we preview our app, you can see this gives us an easy template to let users sign up, log in, and add links. There are two ways we can edit reusable elements. We can look to the page's dropdown and click on the reusable element, or we can double click on the reusable element and in its property editor, we can hit edit element. This is where our header reusable element lives. And while it's great for jumpstarting your future apps, we're going to build ours from scratch. So back in our index page, we'll delete this header element and click add a new reusable element. We'll call it header new and hit create. When we double click on the reusable element, we get its property editor. And we're going to adjust the width to match our page width. So we'll set it to 1080 pixels. The height is up to you, though most hover between 60 and 80, so we'll go with 70 pixels. Next, we'll add a group. And just like our page structure, we'll give it 10 pixels of margin on both sides. We'll center this group horizontally, and we'll adjust the height to match the height of our reusable element to 70 pixels. To start our design, we'll add a text element for our application's brand. When we do, it will be using our default text style, so we're going to change that. By giving it a custom style, we'll make it unique to our app. But just like our reusable element, this style can be applied again anywhere. You can spend as much time as you need designing this, but we're just going to change the font style and the color. We're going to add the buttons for sign up and login. Clicking on the button, we'll draw one into our reusable element, set the text to login, and we'll give it some base numbers for width and height. We can then copy and paste this button, but this time we'll change the text to say sign up. Both buttons are using the primary button style, so when we edit that, we'll customize it to match our app. I've gone ahead and customized this style to save us some time, but now our button is more on brand. Once that's done, we're going to set a conditional for the style. So whenever a button with this style is hovered, we'll change the background color and the font color. We can preview this by toggling this off on button, and we can control the hover transition speed so it's a bit slower. Back in our design tab, We'll group these buttons together and align them towards the edge of our containing group and name it Group Logged Out. Since we only want to see a sign up and login button when a user is not logged in, we need to control that. In the Conditional tab, we'll make that statement by checking when the current user isn't logged in, this element is visible. Finally, we'll uncheck the initial visibility so our conditional is now in charge. Back in the Design tab, we can drag our new header directly onto the page. Now our application has a custom header, and in the next lesson, we'll get to programming these buttons so we can add users to our app.